Hey class, welcome to week three of our study of the book, Stop Trying. We are really still in part one of this book, and part one is all about losing. So the book breaks down into these three parts, losing, finding, and flourishing. And it's all built on Jesus' invitation that whosoever would lose, uh, whosoever would save his life would lose it, but whosoever would lose his life for Jesus and for the gospel, the same will find it. And Jesus promised that he was come to give life and to give it more abundantly. And so we're still really in the early stages of understanding the concept of identity, understanding the fragility of identity and how the world imposes on us its own categories and tries to make those categories fluid where some of the categories that God's given us are fixed dynamics and fixed values based on the creative design of the loving heart of God. And then the world is going to send us on this lifelong quest to find our true selves. And pretty much every self-help book, pretty much every business leadership book, uh, pretty much all of the Western world, the whole world is an identity-based world, but the Western world especially is built on these two narratives that we're going to unfold this week and next week. So today we're looking at chapters three and four. Chapter three unfolds the fragility, the inerrant fragility of the world's narratives, the world's identity narratives. We're going to see in the book three ways to construct an identity. Um, We're all constructing a sense of self. It's happening underneath the surface of our lives all day, every day, every waking moment. Our subconscious, our psyche, our soul, you could say, our heart is maintaining. It's either pursuing to build or it is maintaining what's been built and trying to protect it from collapse. But here's the thing. Also subconsciously, there's this always this nagging sense of vulnerability. Not only the fact that we are human beings and so death is always one breath away, but we also inherently know we live, we intuitively know we live in a fragile world. We intuitively know that bad things happen. Whether it's an earthquake or a financial collapse or a pandemic or a blizzard or the loss of a job or the downturn of the economy or the uh, cost of inflation, we inherently know that our lives are shaky. And so in that sense, they're kind of, in terms of our our existential and material and physical existence, it's kind of a house of cards. Now, we don't like to think about that. So we drive the stakes of our security deep. We try to find the most secure decisions with the best outcomes. We try to insure ourselves to the hilt. And then we double insure ourselves. We make sure we've got good medical coverage. We, we try to eat healthy, live healthy, whatever. Whatever our solutions, we really work hard. And often, frenzied and frantically, we work to protect our sense of self and the life that secures our sense of self. One of the most intolerable, uh, painful, devastating things in all of life is the collapse of identity structures, things I'm looking to, to anchor my psyche, my sense of being, my sense of acceptance, security, and significance. When that collapses, it's total despair, total hopelessness, total purposelessness, and really a struggle to find the will to live. And so we're going to see today uh, in these two chapters, first of all, the inerrant fragility of the world's identity narratives. And we're going to begin unfolding the first of those narratives, which we call traditional identity. Traditional identity is simply outward looking. Just remember these basic concepts as you unfold this with your teacher and as you read with yourself. It's outward looking. It's looking to others, some kind of others, other people of any kind, okay? And that can be lots of different relationships. It's looking outward to other people for validation. When it finds it, then it is strong or it feels strong. When it does not find it, it feels weak or devastated or rejected or lonely. So external validation, looking to others. So traditional identity essentially says others define me. Now, 
I don't want to get too far into this because I want you and your group to discover it for yourselves. But let's dive in and understand the inerrant fragility of the world's narratives and the first narrative that was really imposed on all of us from the cradle, from the day you were born. Now, here's a little clue to where we're going. You were born with an identity. And immediately the world began to teach you, you have to live up to creating an identity and you can be whoever you want to be. And yet there's a creator and designer, a designer who gave you an identity and a story that's been written into his. So we have a choice in this journey of life. Do we create our own identities or do we receive one that's already been created for us. Well, the world says there is no creator, so get about creating your own, and that is always a scary, frantic, frenzied, anxious, fearful journey. So blessings on your study today, and I'll see you for the next lesson.